Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ben and I'm a photographer and videographer based in North Wales. Today we're talking about Sony 24mm f1.4 G Master lens. I've had this lens now since the beginning of March, so a good few months. Unfortunately, I've not shot a single wedding with it just yet, which is what I mainly bought it for, but I've still been playing with it quite a lot in both photo and video, so let's take a look. So first off, in the box, you'll actually receive the lens in a pretty nice little pouch, which I have kept in the box, I'm never going to use it. Along with the lens, you also get a lens hood, which is a pretty nice hood. You've got a nice bit of black felt inside, which really cuts down on glare. It does attract a bit of dirt, so it doesn't look too pretty anymore, but still, it's nice to have. This hood, as opposed to all the other Sony hoods that I have, also has a little lock. That lock is just a bit of peace of mind. You know that it's not going to just fall off. In terms of size, it is a really nicely sized lens. For comparison, this is it compared to the Sony 85 f1.8 lens, which again isn't a huge 85mm lens. And this is the Sony Zeiss 55mm lens. And again, it's not that much bigger, really. This lens weighs 445 grams, so it's not a great deal of weight in your bag at all. It has a 67mm filter thread, which is really nice because most of my other Sony lenses seem to have the same size. It does have a weather sealing gasket around the lens mount, and I absolutely believe them that the rest of the lens is weather sealed as well. And once you've got it attached to the likes of a Sony a7 III, it feels really good in hand, nicely balanced. I can happily run around all day with this setup. And in fact, this is now my main vlogging setup, along with a microphone. It's not too heavy to hand hold at all. And I'll usually just have my Peak Design clip, have it on my bag strap, ready to go at any time. In terms of aperture, we have 11 rounded aperture blades, which gives us a range of f1.4 to f16. F1.4 is a really nice wide aperture. It has all sorts of uses, whether you're just shooting in low light, if you're shooting the stars, or if you just want that shallower depth of field, you can do so. On the lens itself, we have a manual aperture ring. We can either just leave it in A for automatic, or we can select it ourselves. I really like using this for photography, and if you're using it for video, we also have a aperture declicker. So if we switch that to off, you'll notice that there's now no sound at all. This is fantastic for video, if you want to do a little depth of field pull or something like that. So you want to be changing your aperture as you're shooting, it'll make no noise at all. Personally, I usually leave the clicker on, so if I'm shooting photos, I know if I've just accidentally knocked it or not. And of course, there's nothing wrong in just keeping it on A. Also on the lens, we have the manual to autofocus switch, which I always like having on the lens itself. And of course, we've got our customary Sony custom function button. You can do pretty much whatever you want with that button. I personally have it on IAF. It's a nice place to have it. And it just means that I can do whatever else with my finger and thumb. In terms of focusing, this is a focus by wire mechanism, but it does have a very linear response as if you're using a older manual focus lens. Obviously if you're just pulling it all over the place it's going to be different every time, but if you've practiced your focus pull a couple of times then if you get the rhythm right it's going to be pretty spot on. In terms of autofocus this lens has been flawless for me works perfectly using the IAF for both humans and animals. It's super fast, super accurate, pretty much exactly what you'd expect from a G Master lens. Let's get cracking. Wow. You can at times notice a little bit of focus breathing. Obviously you're not going to notice this so much in photography, but for video you can see the frame just changing slightly. It's not been a big deal at all for me personally and I certainly can't really see it as that big of a downside. And then in terms of minimum focus distance, how close can you get to your subject? 
it's very good. It's 24 centimeters, and bear in mind, that is from the position of the sensor. So if we get our tape measure to 24 centimeters, line that up with the sensor, that is how close you can focus with this lens. It's mad. And getting that close to your subject, along with the f1.4 aperture, you can get such a shallow depth of field, you can get really creative with your shots. Now, most importantly, image quality. I have been blown away by this lens. I shoot absolutely all sorts of stuff. I usually use this lens for these videos. I use it for all my vlogging as well. In video, I've had absolutely no trouble with it at all. In terms of photography, again, I use this for all sorts. Whether I'm out in the hills in the forest doing a bit of landscape work, or if I'm shooting the night sky, anything, I've been super happy with this lens. The colour rendition, contrast and resolution of this lens are astonishing. You will see some chromatic aberration if you are shooting wide open at f1.4, especially shooting the stars or if you've got a backlit subject. But it's very easy to correct. I've had no trouble removing it from my images. Looking at these brick wall tests, you can see quite clearly a bit of vignette when it's wide open. However, as soon as we stop down to f2 towards f2.8, that's more or less gone. In terms of sharpness, focused right in the center of the image, it is tack sharp even at f1.8. The corners are a little bit soft at f1.4, but as soon as you start closing the aperture a little bit, it soon catches up. Do also just be careful not to go right down to f16, because you will start to see slightly softer images again. I think as with any lens with this sort of aperture range, you're probably going to get your best image quality around f2.2 down to f8, f11. And then the bokeh, especially when you're shooting right up close to your subject, it's a really nice smooth fall off and your aperture balls are really nice and round. There's no onion ringing or anything like that that I've noticed. I'm very happy with it. Now then, this brings us on to the price. This is not a cheap lens. If you're just getting into photography, do not buy this lens unless you have an absurd amount of disposable income. I am a professional photographer. I shoot weddings primarily, and I bought this as a tool to really get the job done. Granted, since I bought it, there's been a global pandemic and I haven't shot a single wedding. But, <laughs> but I do finally have another wedding coming up towards the end of August and I'm very much looking forward to just keeping this lens on the body for the whole day. Here in the UK, retail is around £1,400. Like I say, it's not a cheap lens. If you're looking for a cheaper alternative, the Zeiss Batis 25mm f2 might be a good shout for you. It's not a lens I've used personally, but from what I've seen, this does outrank it quite easily. Or if you are just looking for cheap and cheerful, decent, all-day, run-and-gun lens, I would actually recommend the Sony 28mm f2 lens. It's a tiny little lens, it's even smaller than the Zeiss 55mm. It's a nice wide aperture of f2, it's a decently sharp lens, I was very happy with it. The only reason I sold it was because I bought this. But you can pick one of those up used for around £200, and for a wide aperture, full frame Sony lens, that is cheap. Now I would love to try out the Sony 20mm f1.8, that's a newer lens, I think it only came out three or four months ago. From what I've seen from some people, it actually pips this one in sharpness. But I think for my needs, 24mm is pretty much the sweet spot. I wouldn't really want to be doing portraits or anything at a super wide angle of 20mm. So it is a very expensive lens, but in my opinion, it's worth it. If you're a professional shooter, I would definitely recommend picking up this lens. If you're just a hobbyist, if you're really, really into the hobby, yes, I would suggest it. If you just got money to splash around willy-nilly, yes, definitely 
by two or three of them. So that's it folks, I absolutely love this lens. If you want to check it out, I've got affiliate links down below. If you do purchase it from that link, then I might get a few pennies, and it'll cost you nothing extra at all. It all goes to help on this channel, so thank you in advance. If you want to see more like this video, please do consider hitting subscribe. I'm getting closer and closer to 1,000 subscribers, and as soon as I do, I can actually make money to buy more products to review for you. And of course, if you've got any thoughts to share on this lens, please do leave a comment down below, and I'll be sure to get back to you. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope it helped, and look forward to seeing you in the next video.